Well, the doctor is in, and the topic today is meningitis. The outbreak of fungal meningitis has made headlines across the country, and although the risk of contamination is very low, it is still contagious, and we think it is a good opportunity to discuss what this means. And so Dr. Ackerman is one of the first coast leading oncologists. He is with us uh, every week to discuss a variety of topics, and thank you so much, Dr. Ackerman, for being thank here. You, we, we, and, and listen, this has been in the news a lot, so let's just start right at the top and talk about what exactly meningitis is. So meningitis is inflammation of the membrane surrounding the brain. We call those membranes the meninges, hence the word meningitis. Like okay. hepatitis is inflammation of the liver, uh, the inflammation of the meninges is meningitis. It normally occurs in uh, children or you know uh, infants can get meningitis, teens, young adults, and it can be caused from all sorts of things. It can be uh, caused by bacteria, by viruses, by physical injury, by cancer. I, I deal with uh, cancerous meningitis all the time, and certain drugs can cause meningitis as well. So we're going to talk about why it's been in the news coming up in a second, but first, not just one type of meningitis as you were talking about, there are multiple different types of meningitis. And the two, what are the two most common? Well, the most common are the bacterial okay. and viral meningitis. Now, viral meningitis is very, is fairly common. Uh, it's the, it is the most common kind of, meni kind, the most common kind of meningitis. Mm -hmm. And there's what we see college kids get when they're in dorms close together. It um, normally resolves on its own. It can make you sick and you, and you feel miserable with it, but it resolves typically on its own. Bacterial meningitis, however, <clears throat> is less common, but it can be very serious if it, if it goes untreated. It can cause brain damage, it can cause seizures, it can cause death. Both the viral and the bacterial are contagious. And so uh, you, can get, you can get them through other, from other people. Now there's other kinds of meningitis. We'll talk a little bit later about the fungal meningitis that's in the news, but this is from fungal spores that get into the uh, cerebral spinal fluid, into the meninges. Um, certain parasites can cause meningitis, not so much in the United States because we have parasites pretty much in control, but in other parts of the world where parasitic infections are more common, uh, parasitic meningitis is common there as well. And there's lots of non-infectious non uh, um, uh, causes of meningitis. Head injury, football players get in, in head injury and cause inflammation of the meninges. That's a, that's a injurious meningitis. Certain drugs can cause inflammation of the meninges. Um, Autoimmune uh, diseases such as lupus can cause inflammation. And as I mentioned before, certain cancers can spread to the brain and also spread to the lining of the brain and cause what we call carcinomatous meningitis. Okay, so let's talk about why this has been in the news of recent, and it had to do with those contaminated shots that people were getting to relieve back pain. So t tell us what happened here and why, you know, we've seen a few cases here in Florida, so tell us what happened. Well, uh, fungal meningitis is very unusual because it's hard for the, for the fungal spores to get into the meninges. But what happens is certain uh, people with back pain, sometimes that back pain is caused by uh, some inflammation of the bones pushing together and, and that bones also causing inflammation around the nerves that leave the back. And so doctors in treating back pain sometimes inject these, the nerve roots or the places in the spine where the nerves come out with a uh, steroid and uh, that steroid causes uh, diminishment of the inflammation of that nerve and it relieves the back pain. But in a certain fungus called Exerohylum roseratum got into the steroid that, uh, we, that the doctors were injecting into the spine. And, um, and so it, it, it was at a, what we call a compounding pharmacy. So the, the drug manufacturer made the steroid and the compounding pharmacy takes the steroid and puts it into vials and puts it into syringes to make it easier for the physicians to do the spinal injections. Mm -hmm. And it was at that compounding pharmacy where they had a fungal infection on the counter, uh, there, was, there was fungus in there and it got inadvertently into the batch of uh, steroid that was used. And so Florida, we've seen 23 cases of this fungal meningitis and it has resulted in three deaths. Because again, if it goes untreated, it can cause death, and, and no one really thinks that when someone has meningitis, that it might be uh, that it might be fungal. So we were kind of caught off guard. But now we're, we have a heightened a heightened sensitivity of this. We're on alert. We know that this fungus is out there. Uh, it has all been recalled nationwide. Yeah. The drug and the doctors that do the spinal injections are not using that uh, th that anymore. Sure. So let's talk about what someone out there should be looking for for uh, meningitis. Are the symptoms the same for bacterial, viral, and fungal meningitis? Yeah. Pretty much. 
much all. Pretty much the basic symptoms, the early symptoms are the same. It's fever, headache, vomiting, uh, those sort of things are, are fairly common with meningitis. Um, in the more severe forms of bacterial and certainly fungal meningitis, it could get to be a very severe headache, very severe vomiting, difficulty staying awake, it can make you very lethargic. These meningitis can cause seizures if they get very bad. Um, and so, but, but some of these symptoms we see with the common flu. We see headaches and nausea and vomiting and fever with the flu, but the one thing that we say that that's pathognomonic, or the one thing that makes us think that this could be meningitis, is if someone has a stiff, painful neck. So if the symptoms are exacerbated, the headache is exacerbated by bending the head down, mm -hmm. that's, then we start thinking about meningitis, and uh, it leads to uh, further tests, like a spinal tap to evaluate the spinal fluid. Okay, and last question, any way to prevent Getting this, I mean, obviously they've taken, they've recalled a lot of those shots, so that that's a good thing. But are there other things that we can be right, doing? So the to more common it? meningitis is yeah. the viral and bacterial. Some of them can be prevented. Okay. We have a vaccine called meningococcal vaccine, and a lot of college kids get that vaccine before moving to the dorms because the uh, because it, it, it's common for uh, for kids to get that. Um, but if you know someone that has meningitis, you want to if it's viral and bacterial, you want to avoid close contact with them. You want to avoid kissing, sharing food and that sort of thing. But the, the fungal meningitis, that's not contagious. Okay, Dr. Ackerman, thank you as thank always you, for being here. Good we appreciate you. Good it. Here. Uh, Dr. Ackerman is with us again every Friday. We wanna thank him, of course, for sponsoring the segment. With us every Friday and next week, we will be talking about clinical trials for questions regarding today's topic or any other health questions that you might have. You can visit firstcoastoncology.com and confidentially submit your questions to ask the doctor. They can be about today's topic or really anything that you wanna talk about that you have on your mind.